Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Quant Network, aka q &T. so let's just dive in. And let's talk about a few things. So first off, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about this that got posted on the Quant Network's uh, Twitter page. We're going to talk about this uh, article, but we're also going to bring up a few things around the institutional grade adoption cycle of crypto. Uh, but this is talking about the Ethereum merge. Financial institutions will leverage blockchain infrastructure at a fraction of the cost of running the same transactions in-house. And uh, there's a lot of information to digest within this. Uh, one of the biggest things I do want to focus on is the IT costs. And why do I talk about that? Well, you know, with Overledger to actually implement that into your system, um, it is actually basically free. I mean, to utilize Overledger, yes, you need to pay fees and stuff, but to implement the technology stack, there's there's no cost associated with it. It's three lines of code, so it's basically instantly live, um and it doesn't pr it doesn't have to have any, you know, IT costs associated with it either. You know, it's very quick to market. Um anyone can really, you know, utilize it, uh which is pretty huge, but the reason why I bring this up is uh, we we talk about blockchain quite a bit on this channel. In fact, I actually did tweet out just earlier. Um, I said, Max Payne isn't being down 90% on your investment. Max Payne is missing out on the largest transfer of wealth in human history. That's what will happen in the next decade. 99% are oblivious and that remaining 1% will be legends. Are you one of them? And I actually ask you all this. Are you one of them? Hit that like button and also comment down below if you are one of these 1% in regards to the legends within this market. Um, but it is interesting, right? Because when we actually look at what's happening around crypto, you know, the overall major money uh, move would have to be financial institutions adopting crypto at scale. And we actually do see blockchain can offer safer and secure transaction processing at a fraction of the cost, particularly when compared to the enormous expense and burden of today's systems. Uh, has never been more relevant. The digital asset market is maturing significantly just as the traditional counterpart enters a period of turmoil and uncertainty. So obviously there's a big issue here. Uh, as the world hurdles you know, towards another recession, businesses will be examining how to save money and cut costs. A greener, more cost-efficient blockchain could form part of the answer and reduce the institution's huge IT cost expenditures. Um, if implemented correctly, blockchain could save billions of dollars in infrastructure and associated IT costs. So this is huge, right? Now, the idea here is how can you have this implemented perfectly? Well, first off, you, you would have to have a team like, you know, Quant to make sure that the rails are running perfectly, to make sure that interoperability is key, everything is easily set up. Um, but also blockchain, in my opinion, is going to take a little bit of time to actually fully be tested out. That's why I say like in the next decade, by 2032, uh, this entire market is going to change rapidly. Um, there's also a few other great insights here as well. Uh, they actually do talk about, you know, cloud hosting and other services as well as data. Uh, they also talk about, you know, not only that, but they talk about tokenization here, uh, which is pretty huge. We've talked about tokenization quite a bit on this channel. And also for private equity, blockchain could enable fractional ownership and decentralized funds, which will not only increase transparency, but create more flexibility around liquidity for what could previously only be long-term locked-in investments. So there's a huge area of focus here. And um, I'm going to zoom in real quick, because I know that a lot of people said that it, it was actually a little bit hard to read on the last couple uh, videos. But we do see, however, there is still a missing piece of the puzzle to be considered. Interoperability. For true mainstream adoption of blockchain to occur within businesses, users need to be able to transact across multiple networks. Currently, it is not particularly easy to share information from one blockchain to another. <laughs> and it's kind of funny. I mean, like, it's not funny, but it is funny because... You know, this is telling us that, hey, it's not easy to have that information between one blockchain to another being transacted. Now, think about how big of a challenge it is to have interoperability there between blockchain and the legacy systems. That's why the innovation that Quant has solved is pretty large, because it's not even easy to have one blockchain network communicate with another one. So uh, they're trying to make sure that they do solve this because that's going to unlock you know, massive mainstream adoption. 
Uh, we've actually talked about this even in regards to like the next 1 billion users within crypto. You know, interoperability is key. But I actually want to take a little bit of a step back to uh, this tweet. So, you know, financial institutions, the big money, right? Um, I want to talk to you guys a, a little bit about this Amazon uh, Web Services document on Ripple. The reason why I bring this up isn't because, hey, I want to say XRP is going to be, you know, the future of this, future of No. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about is the financial institutions that we're already working with Ripple and, you know, most of them that are 100% confirmed. So here's a few of them in some major areas around the world, like the US, Canada, India, Brazil, uh, Singapore, etc. And uh, you could read all of them here. Santander is like the biggest one that I'm seeing here currently, um, or at least that's what I'm seeing. SBI is also pretty large. CM Commercial Bank. A lot of these we are all aware of. And, um, you know, there is well over 100 plus financial institutions. You can actually see them over here. Uh, you know, Ripple's blockchain network is more than, you know, 100 strong. Uh, there's actually over 300 that are already kind of signed up with Ripple, especially through a lot of their major ones. Um, and we actually do see down here through which 40% of cross-border payments are predicted to flow by 2025 in regards to like the APAC region, which are already kind of assigned to uh, Ripple with XRP on demand liquidity. There's a large amount of money uh, to be unlocked here. But again, the only reason why I bring this up is just talking to you guys a little bit about how many financial institutions out there are moving towards crypto. And I think that this is great that Quant's kind of ahead of the game here. In fact, I actually share with you guys this uh, document going back to August 12th, which was the major Ripple uh, survey, or I, sh I should say trend, uh, which 76% of the financial institutions that were surveyed plan on using crypto within the next three years. So by 2025, like I said, that three to a you know, five year span is like the perfect golden area to focus on. Um, and this was a document that I actually shared with you guys on an XRP video going back a little bit in time. This is tokenization, management, and even movement of funds. And uh, I actually want to talk to you guys a little bit about, um, I, I forgot what slide it was on, but it was really kind of just discussing the statistics around uh, crypto adoption, specifically within the financial institutional grade area. So this is CBDCs. I kind of want to get beyond the CBDC count. I think it was this. Yeah, 76% of financial institutions expect to use crypto in the next three years. Uh, most of their use cases are going to be derived from enterprise grade use cases within digital assets, as well as tokenization and things with that. Uh, most of them are going to be using it as a hedge against inflation. For an example, when asked more directly why they would hold crypto, 50% included use as a hedge against inflation, a currency for making payments, or as an asset to lend or collateral for borrowing in their top three reasons, which are, again, great reasons to really kind of consider. Um, and there's a lot more down here. You know, we asked about accelerants for the adoption of cryptocurrency among financial institutions and enterprises consistent with the chart above related to triggering events. Again, respondents rank the use of crypto by their peers, evidence that it is an effective hedge and use as a payment uh, method at the top. And uh, yeah, I think that this is incredible to see. I think that when we really kind of look at where crypto is positioned, you know, it is, you know, key um, especially around like the financial grade uh, system to not only make sure that you were putting a spotlight on the fact that like this is a huge hedge against inflation, but it's also a market that in my opinion, long term, um, you know, it, it, it's going to be a market that's going to take over, you know, slowly at the start and then all at once. And I do think that, that we're seeing that kind of taking off currently, especially with a report like this that is going to give us a little bit more of an insight um, on cryptocurrency. I think that it also is great to mention the fact that like the LAM area, that's a, like a huge area when we really kind of look at the impact of crypto, which we do know that Quant's making a big, big name for itself within that area as well. Um, at the end of the day, to me personally, I think that nearly every single financial institution will be utilizing crypto. Um, it's going to, again, take a little bit of time in the beginning and it's going to happen all at once. Um, we're going to be seeing a, a, an ignition happen, um, you know, around crypto. It's going to ignite and spread very fast. And we do see tokenization of assets to manage value as well. There's a lot of information in this. I honestly think that if you guys haven't checked this one out already, um, I'm talking about like doing an extensive research on it. 
I highly advise you to because this is all centered around the big use case value area and it's also centered around the big name area around these uh, massive giants and a lot of them have the statistics over here like 25% of global consumers would consider using crypto to send money to friends or family 33% of global consumers would consider using crypto for purchases they even have like 56% of global consumers say they are more likely to transact with a merchant that accepts crypto as well so you know, you can see the effect here. You can definitely see how large crypto has grown um, into its major name. Like I said, if you guys want to go check this out, new value crypto trends in business and beyond. This is from Ripple. This is 2022. Um, it's really kind of giving us an insight on where things are headed. Um, but yeah, I think that this is, you know, just the beginning. I think that with NFTs, with tokenization, it's all going to be accelerated. And also, even with CBDCs as well, which, by the way, the benefits of CBDCs and designing a system that delivers them. This is Martin um, Hargreaves, which is the chief product officer at Quant. Uh, it can vastly improve electronic payments by fundamentally changing the nature of money. I mean, this is the largest transition in technology around the financial markets in the history of our time. Um, they're talking about cross-border payments here, faster and cheaper, protecting individual privacy, prevent fraud, and stimulate fintech growth in the UK. Notice how this is centered on the UK. Um, what's happening over in the UK right now is a lot of the banks, in fact, the Bank of England is actually collapsing right now. Their economy is it's burning up. I mean, it, it really is. Um, it's on fire and it's starting to burn rapidly. And it's not funny at all. It really is a, a major serious problem. Um, the U.S. still looking decent simply because of the strength of the dollar. But at the end of the day, what we are seeing is the beginning of the collapse of the financial system. Now, with that in mind, what I think is going to happen after the fact is it's going to be... It's already started, right? It's the fire that started to burn the current traditional system down so that the new digital you know, system could usher in. Um, this is going to be centered around CBDCs that are running on DLTs. These DLTs are going to be your typical you know, DLTs within crypto. The XRP Ledger is a perfect example because they already have two CBDCs launched on it that are utilizing it. Um, but a lot of these other tokens arguably are are still issued out on a DLT. Um, but all of these major names are moving towards CBDCs right now. We are seeing a massive move towards it. In fact, the Bank of England is piloting different CBDC models already with the private sector. Um, and uh, they're already seeing a lot of major innovations around this as well as efficiencies. You actually do see up here, like among the G20, 19 nations are actively exploring CBDCs, but arguably the most advanced CBDC project is occurring in China, which again is, uh, it, they've been working on it for a while. Um, but it would be idiotic for anybody to actually avoid looking at the documents on CBDCs because this is moving rapidly. And a lot of the major names around the world, like the IMF, the BIS, et cetera, are already kind of moving towards this at a very rapid pace. Uh, the U.S. is actually moving towards their U.S. CBDC. And the reason why I bring this up, it, 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 you can see it down here. I mean, like they, they literally mention it here. Interoperability would be at the heart of a well-designed CBDC. This is the focus point. Um, this is also why I stack Q&T almost on like a daily basis. Um, and yes, I still stack it on a daily basis now. I buy like about roughly one to about like two and a half. Um, not every single day. It's about like every other day, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sometimes, um, sometimes more. It all depends on the price. But the reason why is, is simply because of things like this. Knowing what's happening, knowing what's coming, and knowing what is needed in order for this all to run efficiently. Interoperability will be the core. It, it, it literally will be the heart of this system. And this is already happening. And by the way, for anybody out there that is going to comment on this video and say, oh, you're in support of CBDCs because of this, because of that, but you don't understand that you are going to become a slave to the system. Um, I want you guys to, to understand that first off, I don't like the idea of a retail CBDC. That's just the case. I, I don't like it. 
but also the idea of a lot of people thinking that a CBDC is going to make them a slave to the system. It's extremely wrong. Uh, we already are. And uh, I think that a lot of people don't want to accept it, but we are already a slave to the current monetary system. Every single day, 99% of the population, unless you are, you know, Jeff Bezos, for an example, or somebody that is extremely wealthy, you wake up every day, you go and do the things that you have to do to make the money that you need to survive, to live. And a lot of people are stuck in this uh, cycle. And a lot of people are, you know, again, for the most part, generational you know, examples of this. Ever since going all the way back in time, you know, since the creation of money, the humankind has been a slave to money. CBDCs are not going to change much. In fact, the only thing that CBDCs really do change is the invasion of privacy and control. Does it allow for more control? Does it allow for more of an invasion to privacy? 100%. But comparing it to fiat cash, it's not much of a big difference. Honestly, it's right around the same alley. So again, when we talk about CBDCs, I'm definitely investing into the technology that is going to make them run. Uh, because at the end of the day, we are not going to be able to fight banks. Banks are going to do what banks are going to do. Banks will be successful simply because guess what? At the end of the day, they do not care about me or you. So this is why I you know, invest in the technology that's going to lubricate the entire system and make it work perfectly. So with all of that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are on this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.